are being recorded. Right. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, my name is Barbara. I am the coordinator of the Internet of Production Alliance, and uh, I therefore represent way more than myself, and I speak on all, all of our behalf. Um, so a quick word on who the Internet of Production Alliance is. It's a membership organization, much like GOSH, uh, and some members of GOSH are part of the Internet of Production Alliance. Um, we are made up of individuals, uh, organizations, companies, uh, researchers, uh, NGOs that have a shared uh, vision and goal of enabling anyone um, anywhere to participate in production, in manufacturing of products as locally as possible. Um, and part of that vision comes from, well, that vision actually comes from a transition in how goods and materials uh, are built. Uh, we currently live in a world that is inherited from the industrial revolutions where items uh, have reached a, we've reached a giant you know, like economies of scale in terms of how much we can get done for a given cost by manufacturing large quantities in one location, often China, um, and then working on long international supply chains. And uh, we believe uh, in a switch of that model to a model in which there is decentralized manufacturing, in which um, data is what is exchanged on long distances, but the manufacturing actually happens locally. For this to be doable, um, we, we acknowledge that today there is actually already local means on pr production on the entire planet. Uh, I'm talking sewing machines, wielding machines, wood workshop, 3D printers, all of the things that you all here know uh, enable us collectively uh, to manufacture things at a local at a local level. What is uh, newer uh, compared to the start of the Industrial Revolution is our capacity to also share knowledge at a global level, um, share designs, um, share information on how to make things, share information on th the fact that designs do exist. And so it's those digital infrastructure that, that line at the bottom that enable a shift in manufacturing, enabling local production at a global level thanks to global knowledge being exchanged. And some of you might have uh, heard uh, the presentation on some of the work we were doing that was done in 2019 by Jérémy Bonvoisin. I do want to mention it. He spoke for about an hour of one of the standards we have created uh, that's called the Open Know-How Standard. And I already want to refer any of you who want to dig further into that specific standard to that video. Um, and would be happy to share like more specific updates on that uh, during the call as well. Um, I, however, want to use this presentation to sort of give an overall view of what it is that we want to achieve, and then I'm happy in the questions to dig deeper into parts of that. So let me get to that vision. Um, this sort of illustration makes it seem, I think, quite simple, but in practice right now, some of you might have experienced, it is actually quite complicated to do in any scale local production. Um, so at the Internet of Production Alliance, we are a collective of often practitioners um, who are in need of an ecosystem change. We actually need an Internet of Production to exist. An uh, internet, in, in internet of Production would do for information what uh, open protocols and data standards, et cetera, have created for information. So. Uh, in terms of information with a phone or a computer or a tablet or an audio recording device linked to any Wi-Fi, we're able to exchange information. Right now for production, none of the means of production are interconnected in the same way that it is for the internet. So the internet of production members work together to create these underlying infrastructures, uh, data protocols, standards, uh, data systems that would enable us to reach that in production. So I want to get a little bit concrete now. Like one example, there is lots of data out there that tell you where you can manufacture something. They've been collected by governments, by NGOs, by companies in all sorts of different formats with all sorts of different detail. There's no standard that tells you how to document where manufacturing is, which means there is no way to then leverage these, aggregate them, cross data, research it, which would be particularly interesting to the people in this group. 
Um, and this is just for location of the manufacturing, uh, location of manufacturing capability at a sort of wider vision, or I would say more end-to-end -end example. Uh, I'm sure most of you know about the open flexure microscope um, that was developed uh, by members of the GOSH community uh, and uh, who were part of some of the work we did around standards of documentation. So when my flexure microscope is a microscope that is open hardware, uh, but today for someone to actually be able to, like for a scientist uh, to, be, to be able to get it manufactured, they would need to have heard about it, find a design, uh, exchange long emails about what is the, the best way to get it produced, find a manufacturing location, identify if the materials are available or not, um, exchange big doc, like emails with large files on the manufacturing process with a manufacturer somewhere or with a makerspace in the location where they're trying to do it, and then reach the point where they figure out how to pay for all of this and what kind of contracts can be set up. So these sort of complexities are the bricks of what we would like to do, which is an internet of production in which there is a standardized way to exchange data on the documentation of designs, the location of machines and tools, the kind of skills that are necessary to manufacture an open hardware de um, de device, uh, the materials and components that go in it, and the contracts and business model that enable them to be built and paid for. That's the grand vision. And we're very uh, fortunate and grateful that we have just received a, a, a two-year grant from the Sloan Foundation, who are particularly interested in the scientific application, the application for open science hardware of these standards. And so they're funding us to develop them, uh, develop the ones that we haven't designed, developed yet, and continue the work on the ones that have been done. Um, so I'll just briefly mention the ones that we have developed. The first one is Open Know How, which is a standard for documentations and design. The second one is Open Know Where, to enable you to know where you can build something, uh, which is looking at manufacturing capabilities. And one on electronic components is in progress to um, standard, which is data standard on electro electronic components of an open hardware design. And a quick snapshot of how we develop standards in an open community uh, with the example of the Open Know Where standard, uh, since the Open Know How standard was described in the other call we did. Um, there was a, a long phase of research uh, with interviews as well as data sets that were analyzed. Then a model was developed uh, based on 14 data sets and an 18 member working group came together to develop um, cl classification systems. And then this version of the standard has been in test in Bangladesh, Kenya, Iraq, Uganda, and I would add Somalia because we just finished mapping manufacturing capabilities or supporting the mapping of manufacturing capabilities in Somalia and Somaliland. Um, so this is how we go about developing most standards. Um, so I want to take any questions you might have, uh, including maybe anticipating how you might be able to join us. Uh, we're gonna open work on the next phases of the open know-how standard. And uh, we are actively recruiting for our working group. Uh, You're very welcome to also just sign up to our newsletter, reach out to me. That address that you see there would reach most of us on the team. So it's the easiest way to contact us. Um, and we will also be creating working groups that are going to look at use cases of each of the standards and its application in a specific field. And we are very much interested in doing uh, like those use cases in the case of science hardware. So I hope I stayed within the time and we'd be happy to have questions if there's time left for that. There is definitely time for questions. So cool. yep, open it up. <laughs> I can go ahead and take a stack as well. So if people raise their hands or just mention in the chat, I will see it and take note of it. Um, I did see Lionel has a question and you can go ahead and go first. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, good. Hi, um, uh, sorry, I, I joined a bit, a bit late, but I, it's, I'm very interested in what you're doing. So um, it really, 
ties with things that I'm seeing here and problems that I'm experiencing, uh, especially when I'm approaching um, uh, manufacturers. Uh, one question that I have to, uh, that I would like to ask you is, uh, well, when uh, I try to approach uh, manufacturers with stuff from you know, standard um, industry businesses, and I ask them if they are willing to share the design in open source, uh, most of the reactions are actually that they are quite happy to do that at first, because when you pay for uh, an innovant product, you may actually ask to have the license for uh, as, as a product, and then you can open source it. But then the second reaction is that they are a bit afraid that their uh, industry secrets or their trade, um, how can I say, their um, uh, all the, the know-how that they have is actually disseminated and they don't have any recognition for it. So I, I think one of the, the, the aspects which is a, a problem with the dissemination of, of all this is uh, the recognition of uh, the dissemination of knowledge, the production of knowledge and dissemination of knowledge. Is it something that you have in mind with all this uh, internet of production to recognize the uh, development work and to have a, a weight for, for, for those who make these developments to, to be recognized for their work? Um, I would say indirectly. Um, I think that there are organizations that would be more um, specifically focused on on licensing, uh, which the internet production isn't, right? So because we're standardizing exchange of data and some of that would then be what license is under. But uh, we just uh, published an article in the distributed design manufacturing um, a platform, uh, the fourth book that they put out. And, and one of the parts that we sort of let our thoughts ramble on was um, that with the open know-how standard, we've currently done the discoverability part, but the next parts will be portability and interactivity. And part of the uh, spillover effects of that is that if we were able to support how designs get forked in the same way that Git enables uh, open source hardware to then expand and 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 give the attribute give correct attribution to who the original creators were. This paves the way for celebrating reuse of design um, more of uh, just as much as the initial creation of design. So I, I, I know I'm answering your question indirectly, but right now we see like this proliferation of everybody creating or recreating a design and so little focus being put on taking designs and improving them, right? But if that ecosystem exists, then in a way that then creates an ecosystem in which creators uh, and vendors of manufacturing designs see themselves as, as part of this value chain. I should stop shaking my hands in front of the camera. Um, and so that's, that's one part. Uh, the other answer is that I would say at the Alliance membership level, a lot of the, a significant number of the members work in uh, what one might call developing countries or, or I like to call them majority countries um, in which there is a lot of worry about like makers having their creations stolen from them. And so this question of, of intellectual property, which is not exactly the same thing as licensing, but closely linked, um, is sort of on the mind whenever the standards are being designed. So it, it, it like, because of the membership, it feeds into what we're designing. Um, I'm also happy to put you in contact with a technical coordinator who will have more detailed like answers as to what that then looks like. I have a question. You said here, uh, should I assume that you're in France? Uh, I'm French too. Is, is it me? Uh, can I ask a question? Yep. No. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, yeah, you mentioned um, uh, sharing. Okay, so this this is kind of like a uh, um, you're trying to map uh, different production sites uh, for open source hardware. But the, when it comes to the hardware itself, um, I wonder if you thought about their findability and about the metadata to describe these open source hardware products. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah. That is something that uh, my presentation is going to be about. So um, yeah. maybe kind of like a good uh, link in between the two. So if I'm just going to go back here. Um, so the first standard that was developed by the IOP Alliance, actually, it, it was developed before the IOP Alliance uh, 
name was coined and officially. Uh, it's the open know-how standard. And that is sort of the foundation on which we build everything else. Um, open know-how is very specifically a standard for the metadata of designs. Um, so it, it classifies how you document an open no, uh, a, a design standard. Um, and so that was the first step. Open nowhere is around where manufacturing capabilities are. And if I go back to this slide, these sort of feed together. So the very first question around um, open no, uh, open hardware, sorry, is the, you're, you're right, it's the documentation. It's, it's how do you actually, what is actually in this design and, and how, what goes into making it in terms of steps, in terms of, um, yeah, the documents around the, this, the hardware design. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, but just a, a quick follow up. Do you take inspiration from the data, metadata uh, standards from data, um, kind of like what's already uh, there, or um, or you kind of start from scratch? Uh, do you, for example, use something like Code Meta to to describe some of the code or software components of open source hardware, or? I'm gonna, I'm not 100% sure I understand your question, so please. Uh, okay, but, then I think, but, I think no, it would make it, sense to follow up after um, my presentation, I, so you will see uh, kind of like what I'm trying to. Just to be in. sure, uh, the standard is for the, the creators of the open hardware to use. It's a manifest format in which, which would they, they would have attached to their design, which supports uh, discoverability of the design. So if they put it up online, no matter what platform, the objective is then that it can be found by crawlers because it has standard as the metadata. So a lot of it mm -hmm. is simplifying the work of crawlers. And the and for now, the people who create the manifest are the one who created the designs. And we are also working on a sort of retro engineering of creating manifests from existing posted designs that are up on platforms like Wikifactory, et cetera. Thank you. Great, Mark, I see you have your hand raised and then I think that'll be our last question for now. So yeah, go ahead, Mark. Um, so how do I find a bit more practical info? I have a lot of designs that are kind of open hardware designs. Yeah. There are some random GitHubs and random wikis. Yeah. Um, how can I make it that it in, goes into this standard? Love your question. Um, the, so the simplest way is if you go on internetofproduction.org, um, then you navigate to open, or actually if you just type openknowhow.org, it will redirect you to the page that has both um, the manifest, uh, like a, an automatic manifest creator. It's a very simple tool we created. It has the repository of the, of the standard itself um, and the Git uh, that it worked, that it was based on. Um, the other version is that you can write to us at the email that was at the end, and we can actually pro provide support in mapping uh, documentation to the standard. We're also able to host designs um, in, a, in, a, in a Git repository. And we also work with other initiatives that are more focusing on hosting uh, designs, documentation. Can I have one last question? Um, so, and uh, it can also be then continued in discussion. So the, I think the Gauche community, we call it usually Gauche community, it's, it's people, huh? It's yeah. individuals that form the community. And your members, these are kind of organizations, is it? Or how can we join? No, they're individuals. Uh, they're individuals uh, who belong to organizations. They're individuals and organizations, sorry. So they're there as individuals, often they have multiple hats. And then there are also organizations that are that are a member. To, uh, to join, uh, just write us an email and say, I'd like to join. And the simplest first step is probably to join, will probably be to join our Slack. Thanks.